Good evening, brothers and sisters. Uh, let us uh, be aware of the presence of God in this place. Then let us now sing with the choir some praise and worship song. Here in this place, here in this place, here we are standing face to face. Here in our hearts, here in our lives, our God is here. Here for the broken, here for the strong, here in this temple we belong. Here in our hearts, here in our lives, our God is here.
Oh uh-huh. 
send us your spirit, renew the face of the earth. Come, Lord Jesus, send us your spirit, renew the face of the earth. Come to the spirit of God.
I've heard there was a secret chord That David played and it pleased the Lord But you don't really care for music, do you? Well, it goes like this The fourth, the fifth The minor fall The major lift The baffled king composing
you for being here. We will now witness a short presentation by the Borneo Dance Group. This presentation signifies the diversity and harmonious culture of Malaysia that we live in and that the century of Saint Anne promotes. Thank you. 
A very warm welcome to all of you present here as we witness this solemn declaration where the Church of St. Anne Bukit Murtajam is raised to the rank of Minor Basilica of St. Anne. It is a historical moment for the Church and for all of us present here physically and for those watching via live streaming. Let us now stand and glorify God and united with His Holiness, Pope Francis, who granted us such a beautiful gift.
Please be seated. Now we invite His Lordship, Right Reverend Dato Sri Sebastian Francis, to introduce the specially invited guests. Blessings, and it is my pleasure to introduce my fellow bishops of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of Malaysia, Singapore, Brunei, and beyond, and specially invited guest. So our main celebrant is Archbishop of Singapore, Cardinal William Go. Please stand when you are introduced so people can... His Excellency Archbishop Wojciech Zaluski, the Apostolic Nuncio to Malaysia. Archbishop of Kuala Lumpur, Julian Liao. Bishop of Malacca, Johor, Bernard Paul. Archbishop of Kuching, Simon Po. Bishop of Miri, Richard Ng. Bishop of Cebu, Joseph He. From Sabah, the Archbishop of Kota Kinabalu, Dato John Wong. The Bishop of Kaningao, Dato Cornelius Piong. The Bishop of Sandakan, Dato Julius Dusin Jitkom. <laughs> Father Robert Leong Sun Choi, the Administrator and Apostolic Vicariate of Brunei Darussalam. <laughs> so call a uh, stand up when I call you. All my brother and sister, religious major superiors clergy and religious from Malaysia, Singapore, Brunei and beyond. Please stand wherever you are. <laughs> Archbishop Emeritus Tan Sri Murphy Pakyam. <laughs> Bishop Emeritus Dato Anthony Selvanaigam of Penang. We are pleased to welcome from the government Yang Ahmad Berhormat Tuan Chao Kon Yao, Chief Minister of Penang. <laughs> Yang Berhormat Stephen Sim Chi Kiong, our very own member of parliament of Bukit Matajam. <laughs> and congratulations on being appointed the deputy Minister of Finance too. <laughs> Yang Barhormat Tuan Lim Guan Eng, Member of Parliament for Bagan, former Chief Minister of Penang, and former Finance Minister of Malaysia. YB Yo Sun Hin, State Exco for Housing and Tourism, respectively. YB Heng Li Li and YB Li Kai Lun, State Adun for Bukit Berapid and Machang Bubo, respectively. We also welcome Lieutenant Kevin Suse and President Anna Wong with the Knights and Dames of the Equestrian Order of the Holy Sepulchre of Jerusalem, Western Australia, here in the Penang section. Now, very special with us today are also members from the Bible Society of Malaysia and beyond. And we are pleased to welcome Reverend Matthew Punos and wife, General Secretary of the Bible Society of Malaysia. 
Mr. Tan Kon Bing, Vice President of the Bible Society and Executive Secretary of Christian Federation of Malaysia. Dr. Rosalie Veloso Evel, Director of Church Relations, United Bible Societies, Global Mission Team, New Zealand. Reverend Arun Soknep, Head Member Relations, United Bible Societies, Cambodia. Mr. Niels Jan Sven Rensburg, Chief Executive Officer, Bible Society, New Zealand. Mr. and Mrs. Paul Suse, Chairperson of the Archdiocese of Kuala Lumpur Biblical Apostolate. Mrs. Catherine Richards, Administrator, Manager, Bible Society of Malaysia. From our Anglican Church, we welcome Right Reverend Dr. Stephen So Chi Cheng and wife, Suffragan Bishop of West Malaysia. <laughs> Dato Charles Samuel, retired Bishop of West Malaysia. We are very happy to welcome from the Penang branch of the Malaysian Consultative Council of Buddhism, Christianity, Hinduism, Sikhism and Taoism, Mr. Dharman Anand, Chairman of the Penang branch of the MCCBCHST, representing Hinduism. <laughs> Mr. Bupinder Singh, Secretary of the Penang branch of the MCCBCHST, representing Sikhism. Mr. Lo Boon Singh, representing Buddhism from the Penang branch of the MCCBCHST. We also welcome from the Christian Federation of Malaysia, Reverend Ronald Yap Kuan Yan and wife, the CFM Penang Liaison Chairman. We are delighted to call on the three Beni Marenti Papal Medal recipients from our diocese for long and exceptional service to the Catholic Church, Dr. Eustace Anthony Nonis, Mr. Gerard Robles, and Miss Claire Yong Wai Chun. Please stand. <laughs> and beyond our shores from Thailand, let us warmly welcome our 20 pilgrims all the way from Thailand, led by the Most Reverend Joseph Chusak Sirasud. Bishop of Nakhon Ratchasima, and also the current President of the Bishops' Conference of Thailand. Together with your team, you may stand. <clears throat> An old boy of College General, we also welcome Bishop John Bosco Panya Kitcharoyan, Bishop of the Diocese of Ratchaburi, Thailand. And from Indonesia, our close neighbour of Medan, Indonesia, we welcome Bishop Cornelius Sipayung, Archbishop of Medan, and four brother priests from Medan. <laughs> and finally, we also welcome Bishop Indrias Rehmat, Bishop of Faisalabad, Pakistan. <laughs> so with this, let us have a grand celebration to honour God through sin and. Let us all stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, 
that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Please be seated. The rite of the solemn declaration will now take place. We now invite His Lordship Right Reverend Dato Sri Bishop Sebastian Francis to present the decree to Reverend Father Michael Chia to be read aloud. Instante Excellentissimo Domino Sebastiano Francis, Episcopo Pinangensis Literis de C. January 20 Mille 19 Datis, which is Edwota Clary Ake Christi Fidelum Ex Promente, Congregatio di Culto Divino and Expina Sacramentorum, Vigore Facultatum Peculiarium and Sumo Pontifice Francisco Tribatarum. Ecclesiam Parochialum in Ube, Bukit Matajam, Deo in Honorum, Santa Anna, Di Chatam, Titolo ac Dignitale Basilice Minores, Omnibus cum Uribus Aque Liturgis, Concessionibus Rite Competitibus per Lembete Exonat, Sevetatis Vero Savandis, Justa Decritum di Titolo Basilice Minores, De Ne. Nove Novembris, Mille Novecento Otanta Nove Ualgatum. Contraris, qui bus libet minimim os obstantibus. Ex adibus congregazioni di culto divino e eh, disciplina sacramentorum. De quincinque mensis septembris, venti mille, due mille, dici nove. Robatus Cardinale Sara, prefatus. In English, 
His Most Excellent Lordship Sebastian Francis, the Bishop of Penang, urgently awaits a reply to the petition of a minor basilica in a letter on the 6th day of January 2019, wherein he expressed the prayers and wishes of the clergy and Christ's faithful, whereof the Congregation of Divine Worship and Discipline of the Sacraments, by virtue of the special faculties attributed to the Supreme Pontiff Francis, most willingly grants to the parochial church dedicated to the God in honour of St. Anne in the town of Bukit Mutajam, the title and dignity of minor basilica with all rites and liturgical concessions, with due regard, regard according to the degree granting the title of minor basilica published the ninth day of November 1989, notwithstanding whatsoever to the contrary. From the offices of the Congregation of Divine Worship and the Discipline of Sacraments, this fifth day of the month, September 2019, Robert Cardinal Sara, Prefect. Minor basilicas are traditionally named as such for their antiquity, dignity, historical value, architectural and artistic worth, and as significant centres of worship. Among the physical signs that indicates a church is a minor basilica is the conopium, also called the ombre lino which is a silk canopy designed with stripes of yellow and red, the traditional papal colours. The other physical sign is the tintina bulum, the bell. It is usually mounted on a pole and carried processionally along with the conopium at the head of the clergy on special occasions such as this. Let us all now stand for the Gloria. Kemuliaan pada Allah di syurga
Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, who when Christ had been baptized in the river Jordan, and as the Holy Spirit descended upon him, solemnly declared him your beloved Son, granted your children by adoption, reborn of water and the Holy Spirit, may always be well pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Isaiah先知书。上主这样说：“请看我的仆人，我扶持他，我拣选了他，我喜爱他。我在他身上倾注了我的神，他要为万民带来公正。” 他不喊叫，也不喧嚷，在监视上也听不到他的声音。压伤的芦苇，他不折断；江西的灯火，他不熄灭。他要忠实的阐明正义，他不沮丧。也不失望，直到他在世上伸张了正义，群岛的居民仰望着他的训诲。我上主为正义召唤了你，我必提携你，保护你，我要接着你。跟世人立约，我要使你成为万民之光。你要开启盲人的眼睛，把被穷的人领出监牢，使黑暗中的人得见光明。
திருதூதர் பணிகள் நூலிலிருந்து வாசகம் கர்னலேயு மற்றும் அவரது வீட்டாரை நோக்கி பேதுரு கூறியது கடவுள் ஆள் பார்த்து செயல்படுவதில்லை என்பதை நான் உண்மையாகவே உணர்கிறேன் எல்லா இனத்தவரிலும் அவருக்கு அஞ்சி நடந்து நேர்மையாக செயல்படுபவரே அவருக்கு ஏற்புடையவர் ஏசு கிறிஸ்து வாயிலாக அமைதி உண்டு என்னும் நற்செய்தியை அவர் இஸ்ராயல் மக்களுக்கு அனுப்பினார் அவரே அனைவருக்கும் ஆண்டவர் திருமுழுக்கு பெருங்கள் என்று யோவான் பறைசாற்றிய பின்பு கலிலேயா முதல் யூதேயா முழுவதிலும் நடந்தது உங்களுக்கு தெரியும் கடவுள் நாசரேத்து இயேசுவின் மேல் தூய ஆவியாரின் வல்லமையை பொழிந்தருளினார் 
கடவுள் அவரோடு இருந்ததால் அலகையின் கொடுமைக்கு உட்பட்டிருந்த அனைவரையும் அவர் விடுவித்து எங்கும் நன்மை செய்து கொண்டே சென்றார் ஆண்டவரின் அருள் வாக்கு Please then from the holy gospel according to matthew glory to you o lord jesus came from galilee to the jordan to be baptized by John John tried to dissuade him It is I who need baptism from you he said and yet you come to me But Jesus replied Leave it like this for the time being It is fitting that we should in this way do all that righteousness demands At this John gave in to him As soon as Jesus was baptized he came up from the water and suddenly the heavens opened and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and coming down on him And a voice spoke from heaven This is my son the beloved my favor rests on him the gospel of the lord praise, praise to you lord jesus christ please be seated Your Lordship, Bishop Sebastian, Your Excellencies, Monsignors, Fathers, Brothers and Sisters, and Friends. Today it is with great joy that we have come together to inaugurate this beautiful sanctuary, this Church of St. Anne, to that of a minor basilica. Through this, St. Anne has been a great intercessor, a great model for all who are married, those who are unmarried, mothers, grandmothers, and especially for those who are married and cannot conceive. Many have turned to St. Anne 
in their desperation. And we all know very well from the testimonies of so many people that they have received God's blessing through a powerful prayers. But my dear brothers and sisters, the great joy this evening is not simply that this Church of St. End is truly a sanctuary for all those seeking solace, peace, and healing. The greatness of this sanctuary is that it attracts people from all over the world, especially in this region. And even people who are non-Catholics, they too have turned to this shrine to ask for help in their desperation. This is truly a beautiful shrine of harmony. And my dear brothers and sisters, in today's second reading from the Acts of the Apostles, we have Cornelius who said, the truth I have now come to realize is that God does not have favorites, but that anybody of any nationality who fears God and does what is right is acceptable to him. The God that we believed in is an inclusive God, a God who loves all, regardless of race, language, or religion. A God who sees all of us as his children. Indeed, at the Feast of Christmas and Epiphany, which we celebrated yesterday, when Jesus was born, the angels sang glory to God in the highest and peace to all who are favored by God. Which means to say peace is given to all because God favors every one of us regardless who we are, including the shepherds, the marginalized, the Gentiles. We are all loved by God. And this shrine of St. Anne truly becomes that model, that symbol of unity of humanity. All turning to God, all seeking God. But my dear brothers and sisters, what is critical in today's celebration is simply this. How do we help people to encounter God? To encounter God deeply in a very personal way. It is very important that conversion cannot be the result of proselytization, coercion, indoctrination, or even just a simpler, simple uh, intellectual knowledge of a faith. Faith is something very intimate. It's a personal relationship and encounter with God, without which our faith will be weak. And my dear brothers and sisters, all of us, regardless of who we are, all of us, we seek God because we know that we are limited. No one is so powerful, so great, that he can control life and destiny. We know ultimately only God can do it. And that's the reason why the elevation of the church of St. Anne to death of a minor basilica on this day, as we celebrate the feast of the baptism of the Lord, is truly appropriate because we have read the gospel 
And the gospel speaks about the baptism of Jesus. The baptism of Jesus speaks of Jesus' personal encounter with his Father. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. You just imagine if you have heard these words spoken directly to you. I can assure you, your life will change. You will no longer be anxious or be worried because God is saying to you, you are my beloved son and daughter. When Jesus heard these words, immediately he knew the fathers loved. For Jesus, at the beginning of his mission, that was a very important, critical experience for him to launch forward in his mission. That is why the baptism of the Lord is both a theophany and a Christophany. Theophany, what we mean? We mean that the baptism of the Lord is a revelation of God. The Father speaking to Jesus, my beloved Son. Jesus, who is the Son of the Father. And the Holy Spirit that descended upon our Lord. Already we have an implicit revelation of the Holy Trinity that were to be fully revealed at his death and resurrection. But what is critical is that for Jesus, he recognized his sonship. He was truly the Son of God, the Son of the Father. And because he's the Son of the Father, what does a son do? A son reflects the Father's wish. A son is always identified with the Father's love, the Father's desire, with the plan of the Father. Isn't it true we all children, we want to please our parents? That's why when our parents don't accept us, when our parents are not happy with what we are doing, even though we can be doing well, we do not feel at peace. And God the Father, therefore, was affirming Jesus. And Jesus, therefore, took upon the Divine Father His love for humanity, for God so loved the world that He gave His only Son upon Himself. That is the theophany. But the theophany gives Jesus a sense of identity. Now, identity is very important. If some of us have no purpose in life, it is because we have no sense of identity. The world today does not know who they are. The world does not know the dignity that God has bestowed upon them, that they are God's children. That is why in today's gospel, we are told in today's second reading, because and they fall into the power of the devil. In, in other words, they live meaningless life that harms themselves and harms others. So, if you want to have a sense of purpose in life, you must know your identity. And Jesus knew his identity. As the son of the father, he is called, therefore, to express the father's love and mercy in his life. And that is why from theophany, it leads to Christophany. Jesus, therefore, recognized his mission is to be that Messiah. What we have read in today's first reading. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom my soul's delight. And how he's going to bring justice to the world. He does not cry or shout aloud. He makes his voice heard in the street. Jesus, who came in all humility, in human lowliness. This God of ours is so great that he made himself so small. The greatest man on this earth is not the one who is great, but the one who is great 
and make himself small. That is greatness. And Jesus truly became small for us. He is the son of God, but he's also the son of man. He feels with us. He struggles with us. And that is why he came to John and John wrote, how could I baptize you? And Jesus said, please, you baptize me so that he could identify with us sinners struggling. Although he knew no sin, he knew the consequences of sin. He knew what it is to be misunderstood, to be judged wrongly, to suffer, to be oppressed, to be ridiculed, and to be put to death. He knew that. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, as we come for this celebration, if we truly want to honor sin and what must we do? We must do the same. We must first recover our deep faith in our dignity as sons and daughters of God by virtue of our baptism. We have this explicit knowledge we are sons and daughters of God in Christ. That is what baptism does for us. This conscious experience, supposed to be mediated, although sometimes we fail. But every baptism, anyone who is baptized, therefore, must have this experience of being the son and the daughter of God. Then he will know his mission in life. Then he will live like a son and the daughter of God, which is to basically be the face of God to humanity. And because we are men, because we are also part of humanity, we will learn to feel with others, for others, we will journey with others. We will not hurt others because we know what it means to be hurt. We all want to be loved. If only humanity respect each other, love each other, there will be no wars. There will be peace. So my dear brothers and sisters, we celebrate this occasion and truly we want to be like Jesus, going about doing good, curing all who have fallen into the power of the devil. This St. Anne's minor basilica is truly an inspiration for us. And those of us who are involved in the work here, particularly those of you who are promoting this shrine, then please learn to reach out to others be hospitable, welcoming, inclusive, be respectful so that people can truly encounter God's face, God's mercy and love in and through us. Amen. The Litany of Saints. Let us now kneel and recite the Litany of Saints. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. God the Father of heaven. Have mercy on us. God the Son, Redeemer of the world. Have mercy on us. God the Holy Spirit. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Saints Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael, 
holy angels of God. Saint John the Baptist. Saint Joseph. and Saint Paul, Saint Thomas, Saint James, Saint Francis Xavier, Saint Therese of the Child Jesus, Saint Teresa of Calcutta, Saint Anne and Saint Joachim, Saint Augustine Zarang and Companions, Saint Mary Zoo. Saint Agnes Galguying, Saint Deva Shahayam Lazarus, Saint Gonzalo Garcia, Saint John Brito. Saint Alphonse of the Immaculate Conception, Saint Curiacos Elias Shavara, Saint Euphrasia, Saint Mariam Tresia. Saint Paul Mickey and Companions, Saint Andrew Kim Tegon and Companions, Saint Philip Min and Companions, Saint Chaston and Imbert. Saints Lorenzo Ruiz and Pedro Calungor, Saint Joseph Vaz, Saint Agnes Lititan, Saint Andrew Dunglak and Companions. Saint Joseph Renadizimet, Saint Giovanni Allegra, Blessed is the Dong Ecolat, Blessed Mario Vergara. Blessed Oleska Zariski, Blessed Dionysius and Blessed Redemptus, Blessed Joseph Tautien, Holy Magi. Holy prophets and patriarchs, holy martyrs of Asia, all holy men and women. Lord, be merciful. Lord, 
from all evil. Lord, deliver us, we pray, from every sin. Lord, deliver us, we pray, from everlasting death. By your incarnation, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your death and resurrection, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Lord, deliver us, we pray. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Spare us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Graciously hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world? Have mercy on us. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. Please stand as we bring the offer tree to the altar. be seated.
Please stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the offerings we have brought to honor, the revealing of your beloved Son so that the oblation of your faithful may be transformed into sacrifice of him, who will in his compassion to wash away the sins of the world, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord Holy Father Almighty and Eternal God for in the waters of the Jordan you reveal with signs and wonders a new baptism so that through the voice that came down from heaven we might come to believe in your word dwelling among us and by the Spirit descending in the likeness of a dove, we might know that Christ, your servant, has been anointed with the oil of gladness and sent to bring the good news to the poor. And so with powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty. Without end we acclaim.
therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite and govern her throughout the whole world together with your servant Francis our Pope and Sebastian our Bishop and all those who holding to the truth hand on the Catholic and the apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord, Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles, the martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damien. And all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our family, of our service, and that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his Almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took these precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands and once more giving you thanks. He said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take these, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which shall be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension to heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, 
offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant that, O Lord, we pray, O who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who through sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints amid us, we precede you into their company, now wedding our merits by gathering us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say. <laughs> in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. 
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave to you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other our sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes with the sins of the world, blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. That it should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly entreat your mercy, O Lord, that faithfully listening to your only begotten Son, we may be your children in name and in truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Kindly remain standing. We will now have the intonation of the Te Deum.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you in his kindness and pour out saving wisdom upon you. Amen. May he nourish you always with the teachings of the faith and make you persevere in holy deeds. Amen. May he turn your steps towards himself and show you the path of charity and peace. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorify the Lord, glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Along with celebrating our minor basilica's solemn declaration, we also have a brand new Youth Edition Holy Bible that will be launched by the Bible Society of Malaysia. We now welcome Reverend Matthew K. Punos, General Secretary of the Bible Society of Malaysia, to commence the launch of the Youth New Testament Bible called Identity Identified. Reverend Matthew is the General Secretary of the Bible Society of Malaysia since 2017. He is an ordained minister and in the pastoral ministry of the Mar Thoma Syrian Church for the last 28 years. He is active in the Council of Churches in Malaysia and has been on the board of the Bible Society of Malaysia for 18 years. We invite Reverend Matthew to give a speech. His Lordship Bishop Sebastian Francis, President of the Bishops Conference of Malaysia, Singapore and Brunei, and the Bishop of the Diocese of Penang, his Eminence Cardinal William Goh, Archbishop of Singapore, Yang Ahmad Berhormat Tuan Chao Kon Yao, Chief Minister of Penang, His Excellencies Archbishop Wachek Zaluski, the Apostolic Nuncio to Malaysia, Archbishops and Bishops of Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand, Indonesia, and Pakistan, Archbishop Emeritus Tansri Murphy Pakyam, and Bishop Emeritus Dato. Anthony Savanayagam, the religious major superiors, clergy and religious, Right Reverend Bishop Dr. Stephen So, the Anglican suffragan Bishop of West Malaysia, and retired Bishop Dr. Charles Samuel, Lieutenant Ke Kevin Suse and President Anna Wong of the Equestrian Order of the Holy Sepulchre of Jerusalem, Western Australia, Penang Session and all knights and dames. Yang Barhormat Tuan Stephen Sim Chi Kyong, Deputy Finance Minister Tu and the Member of Parliament for Bukit Murtajam. Yang Barhormat Tuan Yo Sun Hin, Penang State Escorts. Puan Heng Li Li, Tuan Li Kai Lun, and Penang State Aduns, Reverend Ronald Yap Kuan Yen and wife from the Christian Federation of Malaysia, Mr. Thaman Anand, Mr. Bupinder Singh, and Mr. Lo Boon Singh, Singh from the Malaysian Consultative Council of Buddhism, Christianity, Hinduism, Sikhism, and Taoism, Dr. Rosalie Veloso Ewell, Director of Church Relations, United Bible Society, Global Mission, Reverend Arun Soknep, Head of the Member Relations Asia of United Bible Society, Mr. Niels Jans Van Rensburg, the CEO of New Zealand Bible Society, Mr. Tan Kong Bing, Vice President of Bible Society of Malaysia and Executive Secretary of Christian Federation of Malaysia, team members from the Bible Society of Malaysia, Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Greetings from the Bible Society of Malaysia. Blessings of the New Year in the name of the Triune God. During this period of the Catholic Church, the United Bible Society and the Bible Society of Malaysia
come in solidarity in expressing our sorrow and condolence at the blessed coronation into eternal glory of his servant, late lamented Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI. We give thanks for the life and ministry of the Holy Father, who is with us in spirit and reigning over the church along with his predecessors. It gives me great honor at this very important day of the Catholic Church, in the solemn declaration of the minor basilica of St. Anne's, to facilitate the launching of the youth Bible entitled Identity Identified. Your Eminence, the Cardinal, has very well put it in his homily about identity in God. It was in the year 2018 that the Holy Father, Pope Francis, convened the Synod of the Youth and in line with his encyclical, Christus Vivit, Christ is Alive, and echoing the emphasis in Evangelii Gaudium, the Asia-Pacific Bible Societies, together with FABC, Federation of Asia Bishops Conference, collaborated to develop a youth-focused Bible engagement program designed to build on the writings and recommendations of the Synod Fathers to help young people discern the calling in life. The Catholic Church and the Bible Societies in respective regions journeyed together to actualize this endeavor as an ongoing movement to mobilize young people to seek God's guidance and help in making good decisions about life and faith. This movement was themed as come and follow me, taken from Matthew 4.19. A key element in the campaign is a special New Testament youth Bible that is produced in several languages for use throughout Asia Pacific and eventually to the world. This youth Bible has numerous passages that provide encouragement and help, highlighted to make them easy to read. In addition to the highlighting, a key element in this Bible is the inclusion of 24 separate sessions that address each of key concerns that have identified in the Instrumentum Laboris. These issues such as suicide, addiction, yes, coping with yes. loss, living in a sexualized world, yes, yes, loneliness yes. and others have been written by cardinals, bishops and lay Catholic theologians from seven countries throughout the Asia-Pacific region. The idea is that as young people seek answers to these questions, they will also be encouraged to view the highlighted scripture passages which provide encouragement and help. There are also scannable codes on each session that enables the reader to view a video presented by some of the writers and other bishops and priests and even young lay people that address issues associated with personal Bible reading and reflection. Hence, it is an interactive, in-trend, as the youth say, school, and it strikes a chord in the hearts and minds of the young generation of today. Even though this vision emerged from the Catholic perspective in Malaysia as we started to promote to the wider Christian community, it found great fervor and enthusiasm from various quarters. Thus, I would aptly say that it is an ecumenical and interconfessional Bible engagement product. In the Malaysian context, we hope to translate it into the national language and to some dominant indigenous languages in the immediate future. The Holy Father, Pope Francis, has given his blessings towards this project and the Bible. With this information, let me call upon the Church in Malaysia to endorse and bless this word of God, encapsulated and incarnated for the present age. Thank you. I now call upon His Lordship Bishop Sebastian Francis to receive and to launch and bless this Bible.
So as my brother bishops receive a copy, we will bless this Bible together. Can we start? You can hold up the Bible as I bless it. We bless it together. And bless all our young people. Thank you. Let us pray. Saving God, you have revealed your life and your love through the lives of our ancestors in the faith, from Abraham, Moses, and David, to Mary and Joseph, to Peter and Paul, you have spoken your word and called your people, especially your younger people, to fully, fuller life. We honour your presence in these scriptures, and we pray that the words of this sacred book may become more deeply the living word of God, forming our thoughts, desires, and actions. We ask your blessings on these holy Bibles in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. We would like, like to call upon Apostolic Nuncio to Malaysia, His Excellency Archbishop Wojciech Zaluski, to say a few words. Brothers and sisters, what to say? After, after the, uh, reading the articles uh, published in the Herald, written by His Excellency Bishop Sebastian, and inter his interview broadcast by the Radio of Singapore, Catholic Radio of Singapore, is very few to say uh, about this liturgy of today. Before all, Your Eminence, Excellence, excellencies, civil authorities, honorable authorities, brothers and sisters. First of all, I say, I try to, and I would like to say your greetings and blessings of Holy Father, Pope Francis. <clears throat> it's our duty. He always insists us to, to do this as the first, first things bring his greetings to, to the end of the last, cant, last towns, last villages of our, the countries of our mission. Secondly, I would like to, to, to say uh, shortly two, three things. Why Basilica? Historically, you may remember that in Rome, the time of empire, when the church was persecuted, the people, the faithful, reunited themselves in the catacombs. It was the church of underground. The basilicas and the Roman, Roman in the city of Rome was two places mainly very important for the public life. The fora, forum or fora and basilicas. Basilica was not a, a, a church. It was a building of the public service. Even the tribunals and the judgments was there celebrated, but not the lit liturgy. Okay. Since the time of, Car of Emperor Constantine, when they proclaimed liberty of religion, liberty of profession of the Christian faith, basilicas became 
place of celebration, of worship. So we have four major basilicas in Rome, mainly constructed on the place of the martyrdom of the apostles. Basilica of St. Peter, Basilica of St. Paul outside of the walls, Lateran Basilica of St. John, the Cathedral Church of the Pope, and Basilica Santa Maria in Esquilino, four major. And some other minor basilicas, like Basilica Santa Maria in Trastevere, Basilica San Lorenzo in Verano, Basilica of San Dad Cosma and Damian in Fori Imperiali, etc. There are the minor. So this title unites our church, our shrine, to this chain of basilicas of the church and worship of original church. When the people from the beginning of worship the, the, and, and pray and they celebrated liturgy that in the churches in Rome, this was the first. The first thing what I want to, to underline, this, this, this moment of, of, of uh, unity with the Church of Rome and with Pope. Secondly, one element only about the St. Anne. Do you remember that the Gospel of St. Matthew and St. Lucas refer or account genealogy of Jesus from Abraham till St. Joseph, his father, but was mainly only a man of all men, some en passant, some, even some women, even not good reputation, but was mentioned. But only with St. Anne we see the genealogy, how to say, motherhood, from the line of motherhood. Not only pater, paternity, no, very easy, very tradition, traditional way, but from motherhood. Because she was a mother of, of, a mother of Jesus. Mary, her daughter, learned their motherhood, her own motherhood from her, from Santan. This is very important also for us. And the third one, shortly because it's already very late, in the, I found in the archives of the, of the nunciature in, in Kuala Lumpur a note of my predecessor. He wrote, I have been to the celebration, Monsignor Joseph, I have been for the celebration of the, of the Feast of St. Anna twice during my mission here as Apostolic Nuncio. And I attest that it is truly a place where much faith is manifested by Catholic, Catholics and even those of other religions from countries around the region. I should be happy that if the title of Minor Basilica will be conferred, so, I can only say that I am very, very happy that the Basilica title was granted. Compliments, felicitation, Your Excellency. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency. Now we call upon His Lordship, Right Reverend Dato Sri Sebastian Francis, to say a few words. Dear fellow pilgrims, after this we will have dinner, okay? So welcome to this awesome shrine of St. Anne, where heaven and earth are one, and all God's people can freely worship in spirit and in truth, and miracles happen every day. The primary motive for requesting the Holy See in Rome to grant this sacred place the status of Basilica is to honor the pilgrims of all nationalities, all faiths, all creeds, all races, all cultures who gather here because of a singular love for Saint Anne and the God she worships. Hence this shrine is affectionately called the Shrine of Harmony. 
a refuge and a sign of hope for all, an inclusive, creative, and bridge-building house of God. I also wish to thank the state government who conferred on us three awards just last week, the Anugrah Chamarlang Warisan Saratus Town Pulau Pinang 2022 or the Penang Centennial Heritage Excellence Award to the three churches of Penang Diocese, the Church of the Holy Name of Jesus, Palik Pulau, the Church of the Assumption, Georgetown, and our dear Minor Basilica of St. Anne, Bukit Mataja. Now, there are many, many people to be thanked, and God knows who you are, and St. Anne will bless all of you. So, I just want to say thank you to all uh, who, Deacon Lazarus Jonathan, the administrator of the Basilica, and Mr. Paul Kang, the chief coordinator of the inauguration committee, and numerous people, you know who you are, God knows who you are. So, thank you very much. Bible Society of Malaysia, thank you. Blessings to all of you who have honoured St. Anne. And on behalf of the Diocese of Penang and the Bishops' Conference of Malaysia, Singapore, Brunei, who gave their unanimous uh, uh, endorsement for this basilica, for this minor basilica, we give heartful thanks to all of you for your gracious presence, both physically and online. May Grandmother Anne bestow her maternal blessings on all of you. Salam damai dan harmony. Thank you. God bless you. And have a good dinner tonight. Thank you, Your Lordship. Here's an announcement. There are refreshments prepared at the Green Hall and under the tents. All are welcome to join in the fellowship. We urge everyone to kindly follow the guidance of the hospitality ministers to ensure smooth traffic. We will now have the final hymn. Yeah. 